in Utah, where the birth rate is about 25% higher than the national average and access to mental health care is widely unavailable, misconceptions about duty are almost inevitable. To quote the made-for-TV movie Deliver Them From Evil, The Taking of Alcavu, you know what the church teaches. The man is to be the priesthood bearer, the woman is to be the child bearer. That makes the man the spiritual head of his household. While this may be a stretch of the LDS church doctrine, it was the belief of one man, Richard Worthington. This is the story of the terrible night he took seven hostages and murdered one woman at Aldeview Hospital. And we are below the salt. Okay, so are you are you ready for this? Oh yeah, bring it on, Alta View Hospital, okay, baby. So before I get started, I do just want to put it out there that um, there were a ton of articles about this and really? a ton of resources, mm-hmm. and some of them did have slightly varying information. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go through a timeline of the night, and like some of the articles had a slightly different time. Oh, um, okay. Not not so not like radically minute, different, but just like by minutes. Not like different days. No. Okay. So I'm just. <laughs> I'm just, my timeline is with the times I found the most. Most common. Yeah. Okay. The most common times are the ones that are in. So, Friday, September 20th, 1991. Hey, that's, we're actually recording this on September 19th. That's yeah. funny. Okay. Yeah, our plan is to release it on the 23rd. Yeah. So, hopefully you're listening to it on the 23rd. That would be great. Cool. Anyways, Friday, September 20th, 1991. It's about 11.30 p.m. Okay. Oh, so it's it's late. Yes. Okay, so... It pe- mostly takes place on the 21st, but it starts on the 20th, and okay. it's important that it starts there. Sorry. Um, people who are there for, like, elective stuff aren't there. You know, exactly. like, there's no one at the hospital who's not there exactly. with an emer- without an emergency. Yeah. If you're there at this time, you have to be there. So, anyways, 11.30 p.m. 39-year-old Richard Worthington shows up at Altaview Hospital in Sandy. And Sandy is just a little bit south of the Salt of Salt Lake. Of Salt Lake City. It's proper. still within the Salt Lake uh, County. Yeah. Different yeah. enough that the locals know, but not different enough that if you're not from Utah, you should care that much. I've actually been to Alta View a few times. Yeah, me too. I uh, I had uh, I went to the ER there once. So that's a story oh, for cool. a different time. When I broke my finger. That's right. Yeah. Yep, so. So, anyways, Richard Worthington arrives at Alta View, and he breaks in through a window. Not through the front door. He doesn't no, just he walk, doesn't in, just the walk in the front door. He breaks in through a patient's room. Dude, have and we... funnily enough, the patient, her name was Kathy Egan, and she is actually his neighbor. Really? He didn't know that she like... was there this night. Um, huh. It just happened to be the room that he broke through. Um, she heard him breaking in and hid under her bed, so she didn't know that it was him until much later on. Okay, well, and she hid because so, yeah, someone some was busty. Breaking into your some person room. of uh, perhaps... Yeah. Uh, unwell person is doing mm-hmm. this, yeah. Um, so Richard, he was armed with a shotgun and a three fifty seven caliber handgun. Oh, man. He was breaking in because he wanted to kill Dr. Glade Curtis, who had performed a tubal ligation on Richard's wife, Karen, over two years. Two okay. years? Okay, so so he, he mm-hmm. performed a, a surgery on her and... Mm-hmm interesting that he it, that he was that sore about something that happened two years yeah, previous. Yeah, about two years before. Interesting. Um, so Richard got into the room and entered the hospital through the hallway that the room was connected to. Okay. He immediately started screaming, where is Curtis? I know he's here. I saw him come in. I'm going to kill him. Oh my Tell gosh. Tell me where he is. Jeez. Um, at like, the end of sir, hallway, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the hallway was the nurse's station, and that's where he'd gone to. Um, at the time, there was only one nurse at the station. Her name was Carla Roth. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was shouting at her to find Dr. Curtis, but it was only her third shift. Like, ever, like she just started the she working there? She started there about a month before, uh-huh. but it was only her third shift in the labor unit, which is where oh, he was. Oh, okay. Um, and it was nighttime, of course, so she was doing the night shift of the labor unit. And so she actually hadn't met Dr. Curtis yet. Okay. Um, she was trying to tell this to Richard Worthington, but he 
wasn't really listening to her. He just mm-hmm. continued shouting. Yeah, someone who breaks in through a window and yeah, is, like, swinging a gun listen. around. Yeah. He got more and more upset. Okay. Um, however, a little ways down the hall in the opposite direction, there was a second nurse. Her name is Susan Woolley. Okay. And she saw what was going on and was kind of trying to hide. Mm-hmm. But across the hall, from where Richard Worthington had come... She saw Dr. Curtis oh, hiding. Oh, the, the intended victim. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, she motioned at him not to do anything. And he was actually able to hide in one of the rooms down the hall. Okay, so and he... And call 911. So Dr. Okay. Curtis was one of the first ones to call 911. Oh, good. I'm glad he, um, you know... While he was hiding, sure. Susan Woolley, who's a badass, <laughs> um, stepped into the nurse's station to help Roth, to help Carla Roth. Yeah, because she's a little... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she approached Worthington and told him that Roth was telling the truth. She did not know Dr. Curtis. She mm-hmm. told him about how this was only her third shift in the labor unit. And she also said that they didn't know where Dr. Curtis was. Okay. Um, he had so, gone to help with a birth in another room, and she wasn't sure which one it was. Yeah. Interesting um, that everyone, s- to some extent, is kind of staying calm and just trying to appease him. Mm-hmm. These days, if someone... Yeah, I think... If, if someone busted in a place... in a hospital helps you stay calm and tense. True. Yeah, like that, emergency know? training and that yeah. sort of thing. But also, like, I feel like t- today, with active shooters being a huge thing people would be um would kind of assume that that's what's going on and they would just bolt i know they would just be not interacting Mm -hmm. and they'd just take off yeah and also um wooly and roth both of these nurses were in their 30s okay so it's not like it's a young candy striper you know 20 year old yeah who's Who's just out of school or something crazy before they're 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 somewhat veterans yeah yeah okay cool they're doing yeah um, so anyways, Wooly was able to calm him down just a little bit, calm Worthington down just a bit. Um, and he took them both back down the hall to room 2310. Okay. Where a third nurse, Marjorie Weiler, was attending to Kristen Downey, oh, a well, 19-year-old. So this is the maternity ward? Yeah, Okay. in the labor ward. Oh, the labor ward, okay, because maternity is where they... Store the children actively. once ever once this they've is been the labor born. Unit. Store People the children. Are actively giving birth. Yeah. So Margie Weiler, she was in room two three one zero, helping Kristen Downey, who's a nineteen year old, oh, no. giving birth. Nineteen. Oh. Yeah. Like, hey, have you? Here's a precious uh, first first child's birth memory. Mm-hmm. Of this crazy guy with a gun just busted into the hospital. Yeah. Um. So. Kristen's boyfriend, Adam Cisneros, and her sister were also in the room. Oh, man. Kind of helping her out. So, this is, you know, where Worthington went. It's not like something crazy wasn't already happening. Yeah, well, and, and th- there wasn't any particular reason why he took that room, mm-hmm. was it? It was just the closest no, he one. Down. But, funnily enough, he passed the room where Dr. Curtis was hiding to get to it. Jeez, <sighs> so, what an idiot. You'll, yeah, you'll kind of hear more about how stupid he is throughout okay. the rest of the story yeah and I'm, I'm interested to hear logic and reasoning to yeah. what he's doing no i'm interested to hear like his like the, the 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 details of why exactly he's doing this yeah um so he went into the room and he's still shouting at this point he's shouting things like these doctors raped my wife oh my god yeah, dr curtis in here Jeez. i'm gonna die and you're all gonna die with me okay so <laughs> excuse me wow um holy crap yeah this guy is out of control. Yeah, he's nothing but. Yeah, he, um, he has lost his. He's he's a cuckoo nut man. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Nurse Weiler, the one who was in there helping Kristen down, he told him, you know, Doctor Curtis is in here. You can clearly see that he's not. Um, so he turned back around and took Carla Roth and Susan Woolley back with him to the nurses' station while the rest at gunpoint. In the room. Yes. Okay. Um, on the way down there, they were confronted by security guard Russell Dent. Okay. And it, do, I wonder if hospital security guards are armed at this stage of history? I don't think he is. Okay. Because it says here that Dent had gotten a call about a man with a gun and had come to investigate. And he was anticipating trouble, so he hid his security badge and radio in his back pocket, hoping that Richard would not think that he was a security and guard target him a visiting yeah. father okay russell dent is quoted as saying i think i startled him because when he wheeled around he put a 357 at my head whoa and then shouted get the hell out of here get the fuck out i will blow you away jeez um at that point dent 
did back away into another room and radioed for help. So no, I don't think he was armed at all. Okay. Um, Shit, this remember, guy is like... You're in a hospital. These aren't the only people there. There are lots of other no, patients. No, there's tons of staff. There. There's tons of patients. Um, however, most of the patients at this time were able to hide or to get out. And well, one good thing about a hospital is there are lots of nooks and crannies. Yeah, little rooms and, and closets. The layout of it is kind of weird because it's really two buildings mm -hmm. with like a skywalk between them. Well, it was it was two buildings at this time. They think yeah. it's more now. It's like three or four it, buildings now, yeah. Yeah, it was two buildings and there's a skywalk so lots of the patients that he wasn't directly confronting were able to evacuate safely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, again, another good thing about a hospital is mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of just, it's a pretty open floor plan, mm -hmm. too. You can kind of just run. Yeah. Um, so after they confronted Russell Bent, Worthington took Carla Roth and Susan Woolley back to room 2310. Okay. Oh, to the room that had the 19-year-old the, the mother? Yes. Okay. Or soon-to-be so mother. So took them back there and continued to look for Dr. Curtis, and this is when Nurse Weiler told him, Maybe he's left the hospital. Maybe he left already and is gone. Yeah. And Worthington said that couldn't be possible because I disabled his car before I came in. Oh my gosh. So Which he... is true. Okay. Before he went into the hospital, well, he, like, did he like... it and did something to the engine so that um, Dr. Curtis wouldn't be able to drive away. Interesting. From the outside mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah, okay. So... So he kind of knows his way around mm -hmm. cars. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So that all started happening around 1130. At this point... It's 11.42. Oh, man. He's been running around this hospital for, like, 15 minutes. minutes. Okay. Wow. Dr. Curtis is out of the hospital and gone already. Oh, he he managed, He left already. 12 minutes, and he's already gone. After seeing Worthington and calling 911, well, that, he was able to escape. That makes sense. I mean, I wouldn't mm -hmm. really stick around either. Yeah. So, the person that you're there trying to kill is gone, and you are still going to be there for 18 hours. Spoiler alert, he's there for 18 hours. 18 hours, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Holy cow. And... <laughs> so that just is I mean, to show you how dumb he well, is. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he acted like he had this big plan. Oh, yeah, I disabled his car. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, super on top of it. I, w the, I assume he waited until mm -hmm. he was there. Uh, because yeah. I wouldn't assume that a doctor was at his office at 11.30 at night. Yeah. Unless I knew that by, like, watching yeah, exactly. him going. And it's like you said earlier, he said, I saw him come in. Yeah. So I assume he did see him come in. And then waited a little bit. Went, wrecked his car, and then broke into the hospital. And then, so, like, so he thinks he's super cool for, like, having this flawless plan. But really, like, you it's know, falling apart. Know, it's complete. I think he's super cool at this point. I think he's I think... so pissed. He's, like, seeing yeah. red. Okay. All right. Know? He's just angry. Yeah. So, like I said, this point's around 11.42. And Worthington took Carla Roth and Susan Woolley mm -hmm. back out of the room. Jeez. Just the two ladies who were doing their job. Yeah, just the first ones that he ran across. Man. Um, at this point, he put the muzzle of his shotgun right up against Susan Woolley's head. Whoa. And told the two of them to go down the stairs out into the parking lot. Okay. As they got outside, they saw some of the first police officers that had yeah, arrived on the scene. Yeah, because, yeah, they... There were two of them. And when Richard saw them, he shouted out, I'm right here, assholes. If you don't back off, I'm going to kill them. Oh my gosh. At this point, they were only a couple feet out the door. And Carla Roth attempted to grab his shotgun away from oh, him. Oh no. Carla. But he overpowered her, and before she was even able to make it, three steps, he shot her in the back. And, With the shotgun? Mm-hmm. Oh. And... Here's her aorta. Her her, so her heart. So she bled out. Pretty instantly. Instant, yeah, so like, she. It would it was a be a matter of seconds. Horrible death. Ugh. Yeah. So. And the other nurse is still there too, yeah, watching all this. Susan Woolley had to watch this, Ugh. and she and the cops? actually says afterwards too, that she just felt that was the point where she felt the most helpless because she just had to watch Carla yeah. Roth dying Bleed in front out. of her, you know, this girl who she'd only known for a little bit. I'm going to assume the cops weren't close enough to do anything no, about No, they this. were still far away. Uh, Worthington had seen them in the distance. Okay. And their struggle only lasted for a second. Yeah, you know, it was over like, pretty quick. It wasn't a cinematic Yeah. Well, and back then, fight. again, to the, the, the changing nature of, of law enforcement... Back then, if there was something that they considered a hostage situation, mm -hmm. they would keep their distance and try to f negotiate and figure things out. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if there's a guy running around with a gun in a hospital mm -hmm. full of people, 
the cops will move in quickly because that uh, that was one of the lessons learned from Columbine is mm-hmm. that if you give them time to commit crimes, they will commit crimes in an active shooter situation. Yep. So it's best to engage as soon as possible. Yep. Um, so that might, this may have gone differently had this happened last year instead of in mm-hmm. 1991. Yep. Um, at this point, after he had shot Carla Roth, Richard Worthington forced Susan Woolley in between him and the other police and the police officers mm-hmm. that were there just to as a little bit of protection. And weirdly, he human shield took her further out into the parking lot and continued to a car, which I believe was his vehicle. So he was trying to get away, maybe. Yeah, but they got all the way to his car, and he actually had his hand on the handle. And he said, I'm going to die tonight anyway. Back off. And Jeez. then turned around and walked her back inside past Carla Ross' body. So he just went and tagged his car and then came back? He yeah, was playing. pretty much. Was he maybe weighing his options a little bit? I mean, you can only speculate yeah, at this weird. point about that. But yeah, he totally, was Obviously, um, hard to gauge you know, someone like I this. I feel like if he just hadn't been such a fucking idiot and taken them outside, Carla Ross probably would have survived. No, he probably didn't think the cops would be there so soon, I guess. Well, I don't know, because... Because those... they probably heard the sirens. Well, I don't know if they did. There's yeah. a lot of chaos going on inside. True. Um, and I don't know, because... She had her opportunity to escape right then, you know, and if he had gone outside, maybe Carla would have not tried to fight. Yeah, him or tried to or escape. Or at least have had yeah. more backup. Who's to say? I mean, you know, even people in that situation would have no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely um, ins- insane, not not logic-based thought going no. on. Yeah. I think just another thing to kind of cue us into Carla Roth a little bit is that after this had happened her husband David Mm -hmm. said quote she is a very strong person headstrong and you might call her stubborn Mm -hmm. I just knew once he had heard that she had died that she had tried to stop him or to jump him she could not have lived with herself if she hadn't tried so sounds like she was an awesome person like that's super sad yeah um, so after they got back inside, he took Susan Woolley back up to the room again, again. To the same room. Yeah, to oh, twenty three ten, where poor he just Christine loves twenty three ten. He, she's nineteen. She's, she's having her first. She's baby. in labor. This is oh. just like the worst experience. <laughs> um, <laughs> if if you ever needed a more sure form of birth control, try <laughs> hostage situations. <laughs> Jeez. Oh goodness. Well, anyways, back up in the room. Um, Worthington told Margie Weiler, the one who had been in the room the whole time, mm-hmm. that she was helping Kristen. Mm-hmm. He instructed her to call his wife, Karen. Oh. Yeah, let's so, bring Karen into this. That's a great idea. And I'm not going to go super deep into what she said right now, but keep it in mind because I'm going to in just a minute. So Margie called Karen and she said, Karen, this is Margie down at Alta View and your husband is here and he's holding us with a gun. And Karen... <sighs> said i am so sorry i knew 45 minutes ago i should have called the police better. what and karen worthington made margie hang up karen dropped the ball yeah, man just wait just oh wait. no so after that call worthington shot the phone which by the way was just right next to poor Kristen downey's legs he had moved it onto the bed yeah. When he told Margie to call. So, again, just this poor girl. And he's such a dramatic yeah, he loser. Started, he started just wrecking the room that they were in. He shot out the window. He was ripping stuff off the wall. Ugh. He was just going Impotent crazy. man rage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at this point, he ordered Kristen's boyfriend, remember, Adam mm-hmm. Cisneros. Yeah, the dad to go downstairs to the bushes in front of the hospital and bring back a big black box oh that gosh. he had left there. Um, no. He, can he I, pointed can, his shotgun uh, at I, I Kristen's can't. belly. Oh, jeez. And told him he had two minutes to return or else. Well, that's pretty compelling, but yeah. uh, at so the same Adam time... So rushed downstairs. Yeah, you, know, he, you would, I mean... Which is good, like, good for him. Yeah, you know, he's I mean... He's only 19 or 20 as well. Oh. 
he's, you know, his girlfriend's in labor, and he <laughs> ran down as Shit's crazy. Uh-huh. Um, there were a bunch of police officers out there at this point, and they were yelling at him not to go back inside. You have to come back, but he didn't. He was yeah. worried about. Christian, and I doubt he so... would get in trouble for that. Yeah, so he got the box and he took it back upstairs. Um, Worthington started to chuckle when he got back in the room, saying, "I bet you didn't expect it to be that heavy. I've got forty-two sticks of dynamite in here. There's what? a mercury switch." The, he had a guy move something with a mercury switch and didn't tell him. Yep. Um, and 42 sticks of dynamite. Okay, a mercury switch, um, this will come back into play with our Mark Hoffman mm-hmm. episode that's coming right up uh, in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. But a mercury switch, uh, I don't know if you go into it at all, but it's designed to set off whatever electronic signal, yep. in this case detonation, if it moves just the right way. It's like yep. a motion detected... Uh, a motion detected switch mm-hmm. so if you were to say I don't know hurry downstairs run and grab a giant black box and run it back up some stairs there's a huge chance you would just set it off mm-hmm. oh my god yeah. what a lunatic yeah. and 42 sticks of dynamite that's a mm. leveled hospital yeah and it's not for sure I wasn't able to find for sure information about this, but people are pretty sure he was able to get those 42 sticks of dynamite because he owned a landscaping business. So he did a lot of, like, excavation oh. type things. Okay. Um, so he might need where... to, like, blast apart some rocks. Yeah, so that's why people think he had these, or, or at least had access to them. Yikes. So, I hope our anyway. landscapers aren't like this oh, guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, didn't you, didn't you wish Richard Worthington work at your mom's house then? Yes, yeah, he did. So there's our little personal connection. Yeah. Guys. My mother-in-law, his my Jack's mom, mom uh-huh. met him before yes. we were born. Um, my, uh, my mother's house, is uh, the house I grew up in, is in Sandy. Yeah, Very, it's like pretty close, pretty, pretty close to Alterview, actually. And um, so... <laughs> Um, he was hired by my mom's contractor to do some landscaping work on the house I grew up in. Wow. So he's been there. And actually, he did a pretty terrible job yeah. from what my mom says. Good thing you were uh, born already. I was born already. I had been alive for a year plus yeah. at this point. Almost so. two. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> yikes. Absolute uh, yikes. So, Richard, he spent a little bit of time destroying the room that they were in and just being a drama king overall. Aggro douchebag. Yeah. Um, he calmed down a little bit, though, and told the hostages that he wanted to move them. Oh. Um, that's... Never go to the yeah. second location. Margie, Margie Weiler asked if they could bring supplies and equipment because Kristen was in active labor, but he told them no. Oh, um, great. So also, poor Kristen's not going to yeah, get her epidural. She already had had an epidural. Oh, so she can't walk. So she can't walk. No. So well, not that she... Richard Worthington told them oh, to shit. bring her in the bed. Um, and also, just so you know, so at this point, Richard has six hostages. Okay. One is Margie Weiler, uh-huh. the nurse who is with Kristen. Yes. One is Susan Woolley, the one who had the first, Carla the, die. It's her first night. No, she, it's her third shift. No, that's Carla's the one. Who oh, Carla was the one with the third yeah. shift. Okay. okay. Susan had been there for a bit, but she gotcha. had to watch Carla die. Okay. And then Kristen Jeez. Downey, her boyfriend Adam, yes. her sister, uh-huh. and then two babies that had, had just been born. That had been born that Newborn. Night, that had been in the nursery that oh, he had man. forced Susan and Carla to earlier open in the up. night to push into the room with the other hostages. Jeez. No idea why he did that. I think maybe just because he wanted like some security in case anybody tried to rush him or something. I think, like babies. Yeah, I think it was a human shield thing, yeah. which is a super stand up, uh, courageous but, and honorable thing to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you the name of the two babies just to protect their privacy yeah. a little bit and their mothers as well. But one of the mothers, um, is also quoted as saying that when she heard the first shot, she just felt in her soul that it was her baby that had been shot. <sighs> So then she's, you know, out there for 18 hours, having just given birth, thinking that her poor baby was killed. Yeah, but well, and if someone's running around a maternity ward, you might assume that his his intent was to kill yeah. newborns, mm-hmm. which is an absolutely horrific notion. Yeah. <sighs> so, Man. he's moving the hostages. At this time, it's about 1230. Okay. It's only been an hour. Wow. An hour. Well, I mean... A whole hour. Oh, a full hour. Uh, 
the cops have got to be super stressed out trying to communicate with him. Yes, and there's tons of cops out there too. There's yeah. SWAT teams. Um, the place is surrounded, and also the surrounding neighborhoods have been evacuated as well, just in case. Because at this did point, they, they knew, also knew he had a bomb. They knew he had a bomb. Yeah. So they ha- so they had contacted him at some point. They can kind of see what's going on. Okay. And I'm not sure exactly what they could see when asking well, to get the bomb. Yeah. And if they just assumed like oh, we should that, evacuate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, they did see uh, what's his face run and back in with just the... active shooter. You know, mm-hmm. like they know there's been a shooting. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. So. So he's moving the hostages. Oh man. Um, Susan Wooley and Kristen's sister are both carrying the two newborn babies. Oh, goodness gracious. The bomb is on the foot of Kristen's so bed. The baby's parents aren't there. Yeah. It's they're outside. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yes. Wow. So the bomb is on Kristen's bed, mm-hmm. and the rest, like Adam and Worthington, are pushing her bed. Okay. Um, he takes them to the freight elevator and makes them go up a floor. Um, he says that it just felt more secure to him. He didn't think the police would be able to get him as much. Mm-hmm. Um, once they got to the third floor, he lined them up against the wall and pointed the shotgun at them and said, Don't move. I can get two of you at once with this. Oh, jeez. But he didn't he shoot really, any of them. He really... He's such an asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like the, you could do this in a way that would be like... Hey, I'm sorry. I'm this. I'm sure yeah. this is very scary, but I'm just trying to accomplish this, and then I will leave you alone. But if you give me trouble, I might hurt you. But no, he's like, he's just yeah. a jerk. Yeah, he kind of is enjoying it a little bit. I yeah, think. he's on a power trip for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm the big scary guy with mm-hmm. a gun. Yeah. Um. So he ends up using the gun and he smashes through a door to go into one of the offices on the third floor. They are pushing Kristen through, but her bed is too big to enter. And so she says, like, I'll get up. Like, I'll try to yeah. get up, even though she's had her epidural, Yeah, right? she's not getting up. Um, the nurses, of course, are quickly like, no, no, like, you can't. So what they ended up doing is lifting her on her blankets and oh, carry geez. slash drag her the rest of the way. Wow. Down the hallway to the room that Worthington wants them to hold up in. Mm-hmm. Um, he... Worthington and Adam Cisneros stack a bunch of chairs up against the wall to prevent the police break- breaking through, and then he sets the bomb up next to Kristen Downey. Goodness. Mm-hmm. So for the next couple of hours, they are just in this room. Um, every once in a while, Richard Worthington has an urge to break something, and oh, so he geez. will, and he tells Adam to break stuff with him as also. So he wants, like, a bro? Yeah, so he's just, like... I don't know, he's just, like, <laughs> what is wrong with this there. guy? Um, apparently he... He was a little... Almost remorseful at times. Um, according to Margie Weiler, she mm-hmm. says that he would often go back and forth between... Being angry being, and remorseful. Being angry and being scared. Oh, Actually, well, yeah. I think it's a better word than remorseful, just being mm-hmm. scared and worried that he's gonna die and what is gonna happen to his family now. Um, yeah, that these are the things that you're supposed to think about before you commit the yeah. major crime. She said that, um, and the other hostages ended up saying this as well, but that Margie Wyler actually was a big help in keeping him calm. Um, she the, was able to relate to him just a Margie's little bit. Margie's the, the... The one who had pre- helped. Expecting mom. Oh, the no, nurse. Okay. The, one, the nurse who was helping Kristen. Okay. Um, they had been able to relate a little bit over their faith. They were both members of the LDS church. Okay. And, um... Just in some of their beliefs like that, they were able to talk a little well, bit. Well, I wonder if he was bringing, calm. if he, it came up, why he was there. Oh, like, yes. Okay, so I'll they're... Into that more. Okay, okay. Um, so anyways, that was all, like I said, that all finished up around 1 a.m. Oh, man. A couple hours and everyone's later, tired. Around 3 a.m., um, Kristen was actively giving birth like she wasn't yes, just a moon anymore. She's... the baby was coming out oh, so they're out it in is the time to push. room on the third floor mm-hmm. and her epidural had run off you know she didn't have any drugs he didn't let them bring any supplies up with yeah. them they didn't have anything and so Apparently, they just found some scissors and, like, a kidney basin detached to the placenta. Oh, my gosh. And she pushed, and boom. 
and she had a little girl, and Aww. her name is Caitlin, Aww. and she was born at three twenty-three. Three twenty-three. So what? In four hours of a into this situation. Jeez. Yes. Um, little miracle baby. Yeah, poor Kristen. She had, she had been saying throughout the night that she hoped that she wouldn't continue to progress in her labor. She thought the baby would be safer if it just stayed inside. Stayed, and she yeah. was just trying with all her might well, to not give she, birth yet, yeah. but unfortunately that's not that's how not it how it works. works. Yeah, but um, she might have been like, "Hey, if this baby's crying and irritating the yeah, deranged exactly. man, that's why she says the baby would be safer." Too, yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, so anyway, she has a baby. Like I said, her name is Caitlin, and Worthington yeah. comments, "Oh, she's so cute." Great. Thanks. Uh, could you get She's fucked? So cute. <laughs> like, get, oh get why don't like, you what just a piece leave? Of shit. Yeah. Can you believe it? Like, I just killed a woman in front of all of you, and I'm holding you hostage, and I made you give birth without all the medicine. With a bomb you. right by your feet. So cute. Yeah, I love her. Why don't you take a long walk off yeah. a short pier? Yep. Um. So, anyways, a couple more hours go by. People you can't, really can't sleep, and they're getting hungry. They're really yeah. tired. Um, around 8 a.m., Worthington starts to spray ether all what? over the room. Um, because Is he, he trying to light to it on fire? It. Oh my! Wait, the the room, the one room that they're all that in. they're all in. Oh my gosh! He remembers throughout the night he's been saying stuff and he's like, been breaking "I'm gonna stuff. die yeah. and I'm gonna take you all with me." You know, I'm just generally being a jerk. Um, so he starts spraying ether, and only about 10 minutes later opens the window to air out the room so clearly so he's, he's like not, super he back and really forth he's doing that. He's not very committed no he's not which is like is that no it's not worse than just like going and committing the crime but it's just like i don't think it is like if i have a hostage in that situation like let's well, let's wrap this up i really wouldn't want to be a hostage you know it's like no. either do it or don't yeah and, Living in suspense I mean, is the worst part. I've never been a hostage, so I don't really <laughs> yeah. know what I would feel. I, like I would say I would rather be dealing with someone but who is unsure about killing hope me. Yeah, it's crazy. It's stressful yeah. to me. I would not cope well with that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oof. Poor guy. Poor, poor all the, like I'm mm-hmm. thinking about the boyfriend and all the nurses the and like and everybody there that night. You said there were six or seven people. Was it? I believe there's seven. S- at this okay. Point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two babies, two nurses, sister, boyfriend, and the mom. The mom and the baby. So and the new eight, baby. Eight hostages. Oh yeah, it's 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 gone up <laughs> yeah, from seven it went to eight. From seven to eight. <laughs> the hostages are multiplying. <laughs> so, at 9 a.m., Worthington surprised all the hostages by telling them that Kristen's sister could leave. Oh. Um. However, because the doors were barricaded, she couldn't really get out, so she went to the window and called out to the police officers for help. Yeah. Um. But they weren't able to help her because they apparently couldn't justify the safety risk by getting close enough to rescue her with a ladder which like i get like you know he has a bomb up there and yeah you don't want but also like he's shot. releasing her but, so maybe you guys should take yeah, care of yeah, her I like bad for her like, and and, and we hope thing thinking they're about to get yeah. out and then it's the police officers who are like mm, maybe we should yeah I would, i'd be i'd be pissed i'd, be pissed. I'd <laughs> might have a pretty a reasonable lawsuit for yeah. the police not coming in and resolving the situation and then when you get released them not helping you and turning you back into the hostage situation mm-hmm. yeah. um what was i gonna say um any particular reason why he picked her to let go no i'm not sure i think she kind of was just young you know she was scared um, hmm. She'd been helpful, but she wasn't. <laughs> I mean, as far as young and scared go, we do have three yeah, newborns. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. What the reason anyway. behind choosing her. Yeah, I don't know if there's a whole lot of reasoning going on at yeah. this stage, so. Mm-hmm. Um, around 10 a.m., oh, um, control of the situation was handed over to Sergeant Don Bell from the Salt Lake City Police All right, Department. Don, get in there. Mm-hmm. Um, he has said that one of the complications that he faced was that Worthington knew that he'd killed somebody. Yes. Like, no matter what was So he kind of had then. nothing to lose because he knew he was going to exactly. death row. Exactly. Um, they tried to negotiate a little bit, but Worthington ended up getting really upset. And so around one... Oh, Worthington got upset? Oh, right. Crazy. 
Uh, so around 1 p.m., Worthington just told the hostages to deal with the negotiations. Um, oh. And that mainly well, ended that's... up being Marty Weiler. Who okay. That. Which is interesting because, like, you think he would want to be mm-hmm. involved. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they apparently reached a compromise on how he was going to surrender. They just didn't know when it was going to happen. Oh. Um, another quote from Worthington that I really like. That you like is I'm going to hell for the killing I did, and I will see all these people in hell with me, including these babies. So I don't know if the babies have really committed any sins to warrant eternal damnation. Just just wait until you hear the reasoning behind why he's here. I really don't understand why he would want a baby to be in hell with him because that's like the whole point of this, anyways. Yeah. Um. So Wyler, some of the stuff that she talked to Worthington about. Like I said, were their shared fate mm-hmm. and their children. Oh. Um, Weiler was a mother of 11. Holy cow, lady. Mm-hmm. And, and she's a maternity nurse. Yeah, exactly. Like, she likes kids, you know. Yeah. Worthington, remember, he was here to kill Dr. Glade Curtis. For who's been gone for... Tubal ligation on his wife. Who's been gone um, for 11 hours. I don't know what tubal ligation is. Um, like getting your tubes tied or being sterilized for a woman, you know, when you don't want to have kids or any more children, you can just have your tubes tied and that'll right. um, prevent you from getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, Richard and his wife already had eight kids. Whoa, Richard, dude, take it easy. Yeah. Um, and so, Karen, freaking Karen. Yeah, 11, and she was only in her 30s, man. No, she had eight kids. Oh, yeah, Karen, Karen had eight kids. Sorry, the, no, Margie. The, Margie had, had, had 11. Kids. Yeah, she had eight kids. And a big part of the reasoning behind her wanting the tubal ligation in the first place is that they actually had given birth ten times. Whoa. And the past oh, so they had two, two that... They had two daughters that oh, died oh. after being born. And the majority of her pregnancies were complicated anyway. Oh, da- medically uh-huh. dangerous. Yes, yeah, so okay. I'll get into that a little bit more too. Oh. Just a sec. Jeez, like, you think he would be... If he actually cared about his wife, you think he'd be super cool with her being like, Hey, eight mm-hmm. is enough. Yep. Apparently he's not, though. Yep. Um, so during this time, Worthington, um, was using the phone that was up in that office, and he was calling his wife again, um, never talked to her, so, um, but he did at one point talk to one of his sons. Oh. And just told him, you know, he asked him, do you still love me? Am I still your bud? But that's it, you know, nothing really was talked about. (sighs) Um, at another point, he told Margie Weiler to cut off his finger. What? Just, I don't know, man. This guy is not operating on a normal no, brainwave. He's not. Um, just do it. Just cut off my finger. Yeah, just cut off my finger. Don't be a wuss. Just, just cut off my finger. So around 5:45 p.m., so you know, almost 18 hours later, oh, man, is when this all ended, okay. and Richard Worthington surrendered, and he, it was actually a very peaceful arrest. They, did he let the hostages leave first, or what was... It doesn't say okay. in what order, but the ho- the rest of the hostages were physically unharmed Okay. Um, throughout the night, so... <laughs> Can't really speak for the mental state, but physically unharmed, yeah. Yeah. Um, at the end, Weiler claimed that... Or, I'm sorry, Worthington claimed that he part of the reason why he did surrender peacefully was because he was worried about facing his family in jail if he wasn't able to kill himself and did more damage than he already had done. So does he try to kill himself before the end? Do we find out? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, about two hours after he surrendered, the bomb was defused and and evacuated residents were allowed to return home and Wiley was taken to the Salt Lake County Jail. The hostages were all... You mean Worthington. He said yes, Wiley. Did I say Wiley? Yeah. I'm sorry. There's a lot of names. Take that there. nurse who helped <laughs> out to <laughs> jail. And the rest of the hostages were taken to Cottonwood Hospital, um, where they were just given a general look over. I think I was born at Cottonwood Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they also um, got references for counseling support. Yeah, uh, I hope so. the two newborn babies were reunited with their mothers. Oh, can you imagine that kind of worry? No, not at all. So... We're going to take a break for just a moment to tell talk about some interesting aftermath yeah. that is not directly related to the hostage situation, but is related to the people. Okay. So later that same night, and at this point, like I said, it's Saturday the 21st of September. Okay. Um, later that night, one of the Worthington's sons, a 16-year-old named Aaron... Not the one he spoke to on the phone? 
I'm not sure. Don't okay. say which one he spoke Cause to. Because they have eight kids. <laughs> like. So one of their children um, was in a serious car accident and was oh. in a coma for quite a while. Oh my I goodness. I believe he survived. A com- wholly unrelated yeah, to this? Yeah, totally unrelated. He Weird. was in a coma for a bit and he had a pelvic fracture oh. and broke his left femur. Uh, that, those are some of the worst breaks you can get. Yes. Yikes. So that's pretty intense. Holy cow. Um, another funny thing is that one of their other sons... <laughs> Funny haha or funny like oh like oh, oh. oh. okay. <laughs> um, one of their sons during the hostage hostage situation had snuck over to his girlfriend's house to talk to her about it. Oh. And that girlfriend just so happened to be the daughter of Kathy Egan, who was the woman who snuck Richard, out. Richard, no, that he Richard had broke broken into, into her window. room. Oh so, man. Yeah. So this it's woman, all connected. This woman who had the man break into her room. Her daughter was dating the man's son, and they were neighbors. Oh so my gosh! So that's funny. It makes when when people, <laughs> you're making it seem like there's like four people in all of Sandy. This is a town of like two hundred thousand people. Yeah. This is like this is weird coincidences. Not mm-hmm. not like oh well we all know each other around here. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Um, another thing that happened afterwards, even though it wasn't directly related, but that is really sad. Mm. Um, back to Carla Roth. Oh yes, so we who, talked about her who, husband a little bit, yeah. David. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Said she was stubborn. Yes, <laughs> um, David was actually her second husband. Oh, um, she had been married previously and had had three children from her first previous marriage. Previous marriage, okay. And one child with David, her current okay. husband. Um, her oldest child, her oldest daughter, was away at college, so gone oh, here at okay. this time. Um, but David did have the other children, his own child, yes, and, and then, the two and young Carla's and her... two other children. Okay. After her death, her oh, two so other sad. children, biological father, kidnapped them from what? her current husband. David. Because oh, the mom's yeah, gone. Yeah, my, my so. mom's dead. So now I gotta go get my kids. Yikes! Back. Even though, um, he didn't have custody of them, and David didn't have custody of them, so yeah. it's kind of a weird situation. That's. But he did kidnap them. Yeah. And then took them across state lines, I believe. So to the Colorado, feds got involved. Arizona. Oh I man. Couldn't find out for sure. Jeez. Um, they get involved and they ha- there was a ton of crazy paperwork that David himself flew to deliver to him to get the children back and it was decided by the courts that they would stay with David um, at Good. least for the yeah. next little bit when they're grieving the death of their mother. It's just one of those like uh, vic- second hand victims. Yeah, this, the, the actual victims are never the only ones. Yeah, it's the victims... Uh, you know, sphere. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and all things said, the loss of just one life is small compared to many instances of violence. But, like, the impact on these specific people's lives is immeasurable. Yeah. So, just another sad thing that happened after. Um, back to Worthington. Ugh, this piece of garbage. Yes. On Tuesday, September 24. Mm Mm-hmm. He was arraigned for one count of aggravated murder. Yep, that put that one on the books. Attempted criminal homicide for threatening Dr. Curtis. Okay. Nine counts of aggravated kidnapping. Because mm-hmm, he moved. Well, I think it always counts as kidnapping if you can, if you just even hold someone in place. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, and oh, is it because he, he did move them also yeah. to a different um, room? And he also was charged with one count of delivery of an infernal machine. For the bomb. That's the coolest count mm-hmm. ever. I'm so like the just the name of the crime is pretty cool. I don't think they machine. they don't call it infernal machine anymore. They call it weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, I think, I think is what they call it, mm-hmm. or a weapon, a destructive weapon, or yep. something like that. But infernal machine is like is like yep. it's super cool. It sounds like an old timey villain who twists his mustache, <laughs> you know, and says, "Ah, bring out my infernal machine." <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, it's it's not hilarious. It's a very serious oh, charge. Sad. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Um, the prosecutor did push for the death penalty, but he ended up being sentenced to thirty-five years in prison. Um, Probably because he pled guilty. Just for the murder of Rocky. Yeah. Yes, he did plead guilty. Okay. And that leads me into some more of the interesting aftermath. Oh. Um, so the story doesn't end when he gets sentenced yes. to life. Um, true to his character. Oh no. He. That's not good. Went back and forth between admitting guilt and being okay with the plea deal and wanting to fight it 
saying that he shouldn't get that sentence. Well, it's it's just it's just hostage night all over yeah. again. Um, his lawyer is later quoted as saying that he would plead to anything if you caught him on the right day. Oh man. So, how do how do how do people who deal with him on a regular basis put up with that? Mm-hmm. You know, how could his wife? Um, after... Apparently, a lot of people didn't. Um, yeah. There's a lot of neighbor interviews and a lot of um, community interviews that said he had a very Jekyll and Hyde personality. Ooh. Sometimes he was really great and friendly and the best person to have help you with a chore. <laughs> with your yard. Um, with anything, you know. But there were also people, um, specifically some little league coaches that he oh. knew through his son's athletics, uh-huh. that said he was crazy and he actually ended up being banned from coaching one of the teams because he was so volatile and wow. explosive. Okay. Excuse the pun. <laughs> Well, for, fortunately, he wasn't explosive in the literal sense. Hey, remember how we're married? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> it's cool. I um, love you. Yeah, <laughs> um, so it, it's interesting. I wonder what he might. Ha- obviously, he probably has some sort of condition. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. Yeah. I will. I, well, obviously, he's clearly mentally ill. Yes. You know, I don't know if it's mad depressive or what is. Or going like on. B- borderline personality uh-huh. or something. But yeah, a lot of people said that. I I it really with just depends on the day. Without my psychology degree, I wouldn't be able to tell you, and I don't have one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna talk about Karen a little bit now too. Oh, Karen! Karen so, totally dropped the ball earlier. Karen and Richard, they had eight children, ten that had been born, two of which died. Oh man. So I think it's a pretty natural decision to have the tubes tied after that. Well, and um, first of all. Two of your children did die. Yeah. And second of all, you almost died in a lot of those pregnancies because they were complicated, you know? Um, so, yeah, like I said, I think it's totally... It's, it's yeah. It's a good decision to It's healthy. Sure that, I mean, it's yeah, just it's medically... Healthy. I mean, you need medically to be a parent. Sound. It's medically sound. And you need to be there to be a parent for your eight children exactly. that you already have. Yeah. Um, and after the birth of their last child so their the youngest tenth. their oldest child was like a junior senior in high school so 17 and 18 okay and their youngest child so it's was, about, was two okay so it's like it's uh it had been done pretty much like in, every other year type yeah. thing Man. um her tubal ligation had been done pretty much right after their last child i am yeah i imagine if she got spooked mm-hmm. badly enough yeah um it's something that her and richard had talked about before and that richard was not a fan of he didn't want to do that because he believed he had an unborn daughter left in heaven. Oh. And that it was his duty and Karen's duty to bring this daughter forth into the world. And he had this with no... Well, I mean... He I, it. Okay. He's putting a little bit more stock into dreams than most people would uh, mm-hmm. find normal. Yes. Um, so he didn't want Karen to have the tubal ligation. But after the last difficult birth and pregnancy, he agreed to it. Okay. So he did agree to it. He did agree to it. Okay, um, so then the he goes... The day that she had it, uh-huh. he changed his mind. Surprise, surprise. You're telling me that Richard Worthington changed his mind yes, about I something. Am. Okay. I am. Okay. You can believe it. Yeah. Um, so the day of her surgery, he changed his mind, but still went accompanied her to the hospital to have it done. And this doctor, is frustrating. And this is where Dr. Glade Curtis comes in, because right. he actually was not their OB oh. or their general doctor. Um, mm-hmm. The general doctor that they had been seeing was actually not available the like day that they wanted or something. to do it. Okay. So Dr. Glade Curtis filled in for him instead. Um, <laughs> so this poor upon guy... Upon hearing their argument, Dr. Curtis even said, I recommend you guys wait if you're not sure about it right Figure now. Figure it and out. your usual doctor can help you decide later on. That makes a and lot of Karen sense. And Karen said, no. Oh. Rick, we've gone over this before, and I'm going ahead with it. So, Dr. Curtis. Good course. for Karen. Hey, it's yeah. it's it's Karen's tubes that are getting tied. Yup. If you know. So you know this one instant just created that much hate in Richard Worthington that two years later he comes to kill this man who just was trying to help and who gave him sound advice. Well, and like you think that it would be, you think he would direct it at Karen instead of the doctor because the doctor was just doing what you guys told him to do mm-hmm. you and know Rick what i mean later says that karen never consented to it and that's where the that's rape bullshit. of his wife comes in i think you know like, oh yeah so she just came into the hospital to have yeah mm-hmm. jeez there's so many lines of consent i'm sure some of them are uh 
mm-hmm. like legal like paperwork that she had to sign to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Yikes! Yeah. Huge, giant neon yikes. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that Worthington claimed and some of his friends said about him is that he just had really had a hard time for the past few years because his father was murdered in St. George and that what? case is unsolved. Oh my gosh. Or, I mean, it's not unsolved, excuse me. The suspect was acquitted by a jury on the grounds of self-defense. Oh, okay. So, so maybe we'd have to look and like dig into like that. Line of and again, here we are with maybe like... explosive personalities. Yeah. Um, well, maybe and there's, we can find out more about that and do an episode on it in the yeah. future. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that his father had been killed, but he was killed in 1984. Okay, Seven so get before. get over it, dude. Um, but I mean, clearly he holds grudges if he waited two years to come and kill the doctor. Well, yeah, and also, like, if the guy was acquitted because of self-defense, they have to have pretty solid evidence yeah. of that. Like, mm-hmm. you can you can kill someone in self-defense in a pretty, op- what would seem, open and shut self-defense, mm-hmm. and you might still do time for manslaughter. Yep. But this guy was totally acquitted, and, yep. again, here's that second-hand victim this we're dealing with like third and fourth hand victims mm-hmm. like a crime was committed a, a man died mm-hmm. and his son you know is also not stable and yep. wow it's the violence begets violence begins violence yeah man um back to karen oh, because man. there's some more drama with her karen 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 so a little while after all this hostage stuff happened and Rick had been in jail. He found out from his children that his now ex-wife, Karen... Yeah, I imagine she did file for divorce. She did. Um, She was getting remarried. Oh, he's going to be super happy about that. Uh And this is only like a year later. Wow, this guy marrying Karen is... Honestly, in Utah, like, that's not bad. It's pretty common, but um, (laughs) but still, like, the guy is kind of fearless. Yeah, right? I mean, I'd um, be like, hey, let's take it slow. So this is when some new information came out. And, I mean, take it with a grain of salt because Richard did just find out his ex-wife is getting remarried. And he's yeah. clearly not a stable guy. But also remember when Karen said that she knew he was coming. Right, yeah. She... So I think they're both shitty people. Well, yeah, I mean, she should have been brought up on yeah. neglect charges. Guilty or, or not. Whether she's guilty of an actual crime or not is not up to me, but I do think she's kind of shitty. Yeah. Um, So anyways, Richard is quoted as saying, on September 20th, 1991, which Uh is the day the siege started, Karen, my wife, suggested to me that I kill myself and Dr. Curtis to get this all over with, or if you want, just blow up the whole damn hospital. Oh my god. So, this statement, along with apparently hundreds of pages of of excerpts, from the deposition of Karen Worthington was filed in the third district court. Uh, um, Karen, I kind of believe that. I kind of do too. That seems like um, Karen. Apparently, Richard had a history of suicidal ideation uh-huh. and hadn't ever really gotten support. And apparently, when he and Karen did get into bad fights, she would say stuff like that. So. Wow. Yeah. It's a little irresponsible of Karen. Yeah. Irresponsible, kind of, kind of a, kind of a loose term mm-hmm. for what I'm going for. And here's the other thing that I think is gonna blow your mind. Okay, ready for ready. I'm ready. Uh, um, Richard owned several guns, like the two guns okay. that he brought. Yeah, yeah. Them were not the only ones that he had. Utah's a pretty high gun ownership yeah. state. Um, several weeks before the siege happened, uh-huh. he had been threatening to kill himself okay. and others, mm-hmm. apparently. And so Karen had t- taken all his guns from the house. Okay. And hid them with one of their neighbors. You see, that's... It seems like a good decision, but that might make things worse. Just wait. Oh, no. So, the night of the siege, Richard comes home from work, and this it's is like... like where's my fucking this guns? This like early evening. Uh, like, around five-ish, I think. Okay, because he doesn't get there until 11.30. Yeah. Okay. He asks her, where are the guns? She won't tell him. He starts freaking the fuck out oh no um and so she goes and gets the guns gets the guns yikes i mean get this. she literally put the gun in his hands when she was over at the neighbor's house getting the guns oh, back from them my gosh she got online and transferred several hundred dollars from their shared bank account to a secret bank account that what? she had been keeping 
And related to that, apparently, a few weeks before this happened, she had also taken out a seven hundred thousand dollar life, life insurance, insurance policy, policy on Richard. Richard. Oh my goodness! Yeah, seven hundred thousand dollars. Someone's life gonna insurance. make bank when someone decides mm-hmm. to go yeah. cuckoo nut man. And she says that this is just because he had been feeling suicidal for the past couple of years. But That's I mean, not what you should do uh, when someone feels suicidal in yeah. your family, though. So, like, anyway, so she went over and got the guns and brought them back home and gave them to him. And then just sat around in the house while he was in the shed building his bomb. Jeez. She didn't go to check on him. I don't know for sure that she knew he was building a bomb, but... She very well might have and not cared. Wow. Well, this is... After some of this information came out, um, David Ross, remember Carla's yes. widow? Yes. Uh-huh. Widower. Widower. Yeah. Um, he did file a deposition against Karen. Okay. And Fair. Yes. Um... I believe this is from an article from Deseret News. It says, Karen Worthington gave her former husband the idea to storm out the view hospital and knowingly pushed him over the edge the night he did. Oh, man. Karen Worthington played a key role in exacerbating her husband's warped anger toward Dr. Glade Curtis at out the view hospital. Um, she denied all all claims of that of course yeah like, he would yeah of course yeah she says i was a very loving kind and sweet wife ross only made the allegations because it was the only way he could deal with this get some more uh, justice yes yeah <laughs> get actual justice yeah. maybe um of course ross denied that and said no you're, you're yeah <laughs> it's kind of a he said she said unfortunately yes. um she pretty much ended this statement saying so no, what he's saying is an absolute outright lie. I fought for two and a half years since he turned to suicidal to keep him alive. I didn't want my children to think their father would ever do that to them. Rick is mad because I'm getting married, and this is the only way he knows to strike out against me. Which is totally fair. Like, I totally get that. Like, yeah. that could definitely be true, you know? Yep. So, yeah, that's some of the drama with Karen my there. My goodness. Mm-hmm. It's outrageous. Mm-hmm. Um, it does also say that during the two years between her tubal ligation and the night of the siege, she did placate him a bit by agreeing that it was a mistake to have it done. Oh, so okay. that also possibly could have yeah, that could have extended his feelings of resentment. Too. Yeah, it could have extended his his rage mm-hmm. from recent until two years later. Yeah. yeah. Um. So back to Richard. He is in Sully County Jail, of course. Yeah, what's he up to? And he was transferred to the Utah State Prison, and he okay. did try to kill himself there um, several times, okay. actually. Oh. That makes sense for someone with a history of suicide ideation yeah, it does, especially in that situation. Um, he's been quoted as saying that he's not going to be in prison for 35 years, like, no oh. matter what the cost is. Oh, he got 35 so, to life? I don't know if it was for life. All I could find okay. was 35 years for the murder of Carlos. Okay, so and he was already in his... 30s, right? Yeah, he was, okay. um, he is 40 at this point, okay. so, yes. Um, so, Richard's in prison, and he made suicide attempts, he made several escape attempts oh. at Utah State Prison. Which, again, suicide and escape are, like, mm-hmm. opposing, uh, outlooks. Yeah. Wow. Um, he's being, there's a quote from one of the guards saying he was a constant problem he constantly told the other inmates that he wasn't a criminal and that he was better than they were yeah i'm sure they love that The other inmates beat him up regularly (laughs) because of his attitude problem you you know you play (laughs) shitty games you win shitty prizes like sorry um because of these kinds of issues he was transferred actually to the new mexico prison system oh they transferred him out Uh, of the state actually because of behavioral to all four of new mexico's facilities because of how annoying he was dude yeah like come on um after he caused enough problems there he was going to be transferred to nevada to Ely State Prison, Eli State Prison, uh, E-L-Y, what it? Uh, Ely to is Ely how it's pronounced. <laughs> it's kind um, of a small regional town in the yeah. central central Nevada. Um, but before he was transferred there, he was actually trying to escape from one of the New, Me- the New Mexico prisons again, and he fell off the fence and broke both of his legs. Oh. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I hate to laugh at someone's misfortune, <laughs> except for Richard Worthington, because kind of, kind of, fuck that guy. <laughs> like, yeah, if anyone should... 
Yep. You should get their legs busted. It's this jerk. Yep. Um, so he was transferred to Ely State Prison. And on November 11th of 1993. Oh, so only two years so later. Two years wow, later. he'd been transferred five times mm-hmm. in two years? Yep. Jeez. Um, November 11th, 1993, he tied his shoestrings to holes in the top of his cell mm-hmm. and then tied that to his bed sheet and hung himself and died. Wow. So he succeeded in committing suicide. What a sad strange man yep and that's where the story ends you that's know, Richard course, Worthington all the hostages they I believe were able to live normal fulfilling lives after that and yeah. they're mostly still alive now very it's cool only been 20 years yeah um little baby Caitlin if you ever listen to this mm-hmm. shoot us a message That'd yeah <laughs> we'd love to hear about your life post Altaview mm-hmm. and this is a little of the salt